Hello everyone and welcome to Ohio Nicole Creates. In this video, I would like to share my process for making paper with you. Handmade paper makes a great gift and it's a fun material to use in card projects and multimedia projects. To start my own paper making journey, I um, found two resources that were especially helpful. The first is Paper Making with Garden Plants and the second is The Paper Maker's Companion. Both of these sources had a plethora of information on different techniques, tools, materials, tips, and the history of paper making. So if you are able, I would highly recommend checking these books out of your local library just to learn a little bit more about paper making from the technical aspect. I also used Arnold Grummer's Paper Mill Pro kit, and I wanted to feature this in my video because as I was starting to do research on paper making, I found it really challenging to find a kit that included everything that was needed to um, make a full project. So I just wanted to share this resource with you. In order to make paper, it is necessary to take the raw material, um, which is usually in the home studio recycled paper, and to blend it or pulp it so that it can be made into a slurry. Anything that is made from paper for the most part can be recycled back into handmade paper. Um, and also you can use plants from your garden, um, things that you forage, such as plant and organic materials, and you can buy professional pulp sheets from paper makers um, in different companies with things like hemp, jute, cotton. So there really are a lot of possibilities for making handmade paper. For this particular experiment, I used the grass from my children's Easter baskets. I thought it would be a fun way to repurpose something that usually goes into the recycle bin and um, also kind of commemorate our fun holiday. To make the paper, I am mixing the shredded paper with hot water and blending with an immersion blender. <clears throat> you can use a full-size blender, but I find for small batch paper making, a large mason jar and the immersion blender are perfect and they're a little bit less messy. Um, if you're making more paper or trying to make more pulp, then of course a bigger processing is necessary. And I'll be posting a video about um, a, ma a machine, a simple machine my husband and I made for large batch paper making. Once you have mixed your slurry, um, it is time to form your first sheet of paper. Arnold Grummer's paper mill here includes a grid and a screen. And what I really liked about this particular mold and decal is that the, um, the screen Velcros onto the mold. And I just found that it was a very easy way to form a sheet of paper. Sometimes holding the traditional mold and decal can be a little bit awkward, especially when you're learning the process. Um, and so having everything kind of stay together for you made, makes it a little bit easier and also made it so easy um, with working with my kids. But you just dump the slurry in um, and you create a sheet that is about the thickness that you would like. And it does take a little bit of troubleshooting uh, to decide what thickness the thinner paper is going to be smoother and better for writing. Thicker paper like cardstock is better for manipulating, cutting, doing mixed media and other kind of alterations and applications. Once you have laid your first sheet, it is necessary to remove the excess water. And so in order to do that, I lay a screen down and then I take a sponge and I just sponge out all of the extra water that I can. And from the various attempts at paper making and after making quite a few sheets of paper, I've learned that the more water I can remove at this stage, the stronger my paper is and um, <clears throat> the faster that it dries. So you'll see here that I spend quite a bit of time just sponging out that water and wringing out my sponge um, to help expedite the process of drying. Once I've removed all of the water that I can, I take this screen off and I put on a cooch sheet. And a cooch sheet is a funny name, but it actually comes from the French say couche, which means to put to bed. And I think that's just such a lovely image, the idea of um, putting your paper to bed or tucking it in between these absorbent layers of sheets. So um, I flipped that over and I am drying the other side of the screen. And once I have pressed into the cooch sheet, I will remove 
the initial screen and I have my first piece of paper formed. I take a second cooch sheet and just use a pressing bar to press out any excess water that I can. And this is the last kind of step or the last chance of taking out that extra water. Firmly pressing also helps to keep the fibers um, knitted together and it will um, allow for stronger paper. Here I am just using that same process with the blue Easter grass, um, using my hand to kind of make sure I have an even dispersion of pulp across the screen and letting that water drain out before I go on to the pressing. Arnold Grummer's YouTube channel does have a variety of videos on using his particular set of mold and decals, but also on different techniques and the technology or the <laughs> the reasoning behind doing the steps in the order that that they are done so i will link to his videos below because i found them very informative um, but i was actually surprised when i started making paper at just how quickly the process goes um, and we have made quite a few sheets of paper since this first experiment and started to add in things like inclusions with flower petals and seeds and iridescent flakes um, so I will be posting more of those videos soon as I start to use this paper in various projects once I have removed all of the water that I can from each of these sheets I simply hang them on a hanging rack with clothespins and I allow them to dry. Drying overnight um, was really helpful. If you have a nice sunny day, you may be able to put them out in the morning and bring them in the afternoon, but you just kind of have to test. And when they're dry, you can actually remove them from the coaching sheet. Um, here we have out in the yard <laughs> drying those. So after two days, I returned and um, removed the paper from my coaching sheets and I did this just by slipping my finger underneath the paper and releasing all of the sides and the paper just pops off very nicely um, from the absorbent material and those cooch sheets can be reused. You can also use different kinds of material such as different fabrics, interfacing, fleeces, felts. Just keep in mind that whatever the surface of your cooch sheet is will make the same impression on your paper. So if you want smooth paper, you need to use um, something with a tighter weave. <clears throat> I did have a bit of wobbling <laughs> to the paper, um, a little bit of uh, curl and cockle as, as it's called. Um, so I decided to press that out by putting the paper in a flower press for a few days. I like to use the flower press because it allows me to control how much pressure is put onto the paper. So after a few days we returned to um, see the paper. You can see my assistant here. Her favorite part of this process is taking, <laughs> taking the wheels off of the flower press. Um, but just a few days or even a, a day or two will make the paper completely straight and um, very nicely pressed. Some paper makers do decide to cut off the deckled edge. I actually kind of like that that rough edge on the side and I usually leave them in most of my projects. I was very happy with the consistency and the smoothness of this particular paper. This paper folded very nicely. There was no um, breakage. And I just wanted to illustrate how smooth the writing is. I'm writing here, handmade paper is the best. And I plan to use this paper to make a journal for my children so that they can put in their sketches. If you make handmade paper, I would love to see it. I will have more videos coming soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye everyone.